on this episode of Dish with Mary, I stick around my hometown Toronto and visit Chef Nui Regular at her restaurant Kin. We look at her whole career, starting with the decision to leave her job as a nurse in Thailand so that she could bring Northern Thai cuisine to the masses. You can try her amazing cooking at one of the many restaurants her and her husband Jeff operate in Toronto. And today, we're making one of her signature dishes, red curry pork. To me, cooking should be fun, and finding ways to make it accessible is what motivates me. I love the sizzle of butter melting in a pan, the smell of cinnamon while I'm baking. I need to touch food while it's cooking, and of course, taste it, even if I can't see it very well. The kitchen is my happy place. That's why I'm visiting chefs across Canada who feel the same way I do and inviting them to cook with me in my kitchen. Welcome to Dish with Mary. Today I've got Chef Nui here with us from Kin Restaurant in Toronto and we are going to be cooking up a spectacular dish. What are we making? We're making red curry for today. Love it. Okay, so where do we begin? Of course, red curry we eat with Thai jasmine rice. So we start with the cooking rice. And then after that, we'll go to make the curry paste and red curry. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we've gone a little step further and we've prepared everything. We've got all our ingredients measured out in front of us. So let's start with the rice. Right now, we're waiting for the water to boil just a little bit. Right, okay, so this is where I, I kind of listen in for this. Once I hear that little bubble going, then I know I'm ready to, to kind of pour everything into the pot. Cooking rice at home, it's such a wonderful thing because your house will be filled with aromatic of the jasmine rice. Yeah. The grain of the rice itself is a very beautiful. So I would just recommend just rinse them one time to take out away some of the dust yeah. around the rice, that's all. And start to be rolling boil here. So the beautiful Thai homely rice or jasmine okay. rice here. We've got a yes. bowl, we've got our strainer. Yes. And then we've just poured the rice into that and you want me to pour the water right over yes, top, please. right? Yes, please. Thank you. So teamwork here. Teamwork. I love it. See, this is one thing about the cooking rice, Mary. So make sure that um, all the water going out because sometimes too much water and the rice become too mushy. Okay, so you want to make sure once you rinse it, you strain that properly. Yes. And then that goes into the pot. So all we're doing is just pouring this right directly into that boiling water. And then what I'll do is once you're done with that, I'm just gonna move it out of the way for us. Thank you. So now here, I will have uh, cook a little bit of this rice. So it will take about um, six to eight minutes for the rice to boil. So how long do you keep it at a rolling boil? Um, it depends. Minutes? It depends with the, the stove that you have at home. Some of our guests at home use gas stove, so it might be fast boiling. And if you use the different type of stove, mm -hmm. it just like, you know, sometimes different type of pot, it, it contributes to the factor how fast the water will boil as well. Are you going to cover this at all with a and lid? Yes, we're going to cover this one with a lid and then leave this stay on for 10 to 15 minutes. And Amazing. after that, we'll just remove from the heat, flub the rice up and ready to eat. Okay, so now that's taken care of. What's next? The next thing is uh, about making the red curry. Uh, i like to show you how to make red curry from scratch, which is most of the time when you make red curry, uh, we use the mota and peso, this beautiful uh, stone, granite stone here. Mm -hmm. Or you can use the red curry that you can buy from the store bought as well. Okay. The first thing that i like to show you, meanwhile the rice is uh, simmer here, yep. is uh, we're gonna toast our uh, spices here. This is uh, our coriander seeds, our white pepper corns, and we're gonna wait for this cumin to come at last. So you've just put all those ingredients into a heated pan and then you put that on the stove. And now you can see that um, um, they start to cook more, so I'm gonna add the last part, which is the cumin in here. So the minute you get that little hint of those spices toasting up, that's when you know it's ready. First aroma that you get, it just like, it start to toast. Right. And then when you get a little bit more of the toasting aromatic in there, so now you know that it's- Turn off the turn, heat, yeah, and turn it's gonna the continue heat. cooking. Yes, or you can just directly add it into your uh, mota and pesto. Okay, that's perfect. And that's what we're going to do today. Yes. So now to cook this one, uh, to fry this one, you just in a raw motion like this. Would you like to try? I would love to. I thought you'd never ask. 
This is one of my favorite things to do. Oh, that's aroma of the spice. Now you can really, really smell that. Yeah. So now we can move on to the next thing. Okay. So the next thing is our fresh ingredients here. So we're gonna use the, this one, it actually, the lemon glass that we thin slice them. So we'll add so in So really here. thin slices of lemongrass. Yes. Okay. And you see that we have so many ingredients here, but again, when you make curry, so put one ingredient at a time and grind them at one at a time. So now this one gonna be the galanga. To me, galanga looks similar to ginger, but it has a citrusy, piney flavor. Yes, okay. and this is the garlic. So I use a Thai garlic where we use it with skin on, but again, the Thai garlic, if you don't Can have I it. Try one? Yes. I just want to hold it. I mean, okay, so this is much smaller than the garlic that we're used to. Yes. What's the difference in flavor between the two? Ooh, I would say the Thai garlic has a very nice uh, flavor and spicier. Okay. So it's, and also we use with skin on, on, so that's why when you make the curry, it actually had a beautiful oil coming out in when, when um, the, the curry, yes. So after okay. this, we're gonna add um, some of the salt. Okay. And then you're adding some red chilies as well. So after this, I use um, a little bit of paprika to make a beautiful bright color because sometimes the chili that you find in the market might not give our very nice color of bread. Yeah. And then after that will be our shallot. So this thing is like need to power until it's break down to be fine curry paste. So a smooth consistency yes. we want. Okay. And also. You know, one thing that um, I like you to um, experience here is mm -hmm. our special lamb, which is it's called makrut lamb here. So have you uh, used with the makrut lamb before? I have never. I've never used these. And what's interesting about them is they're probably the size of a key lime, but they've got a different exterior. So they're yeah, bumpy and they're a little deeper in green. Yeah, the, the, the skin is a little bit rougher. Yeah. And also we make shampoo out of this, we make soap out of this as well. So oh, see, I they, was on to it. This can be like a lots of um, uh, beneficial. So today, you know, uh, to get this one, we use mm -hmm. the, uh, the Magood lamb zest. So would you like to help me a little bit, please? Yes, please. How much of it do we it's want? It's about like a one, teaspoon so that's uh, about right yep. yeah so then we'll there add we this one in thank you so much mm. it Look smells that. so fresh yeah we have an ingredient yeah the last one so What's the last one this one here will be uh, shrimp paste so the shrimp paste actually we add at last because it's already fine it's very nice so many people don't like the the um, the aroma of the shrimp paste but this one don't be scared by aroma because the shrimp paste itself has a beautiful umami and this is the secret how to make the thai curry taste very good and that's what you're doing you're building it's just adding to build the flavor yes, yes. of the paste okay so we'll add this at last and okay. then after that we're ready to have red curry paste to cook our red curry today after a quick break, we're going to visit Chef Nui at her restaurant, Kin. Dish with Mary will be right back. We now return to Dish with Mary. A few weeks ago, I visited Chef Nui at her restaurant, Kin, in Toronto. We chat about its Royal Thai inspired menu and atmosphere as well as the other restaurants she runs, Pai, Sabai Sabai, and Suko Thai. Thank you so much for having us today. I can't wait to get into it to talk about more about you and about the restaurants, plural restaurants. But I wanna talk about, I wanna go back and talk about your early life in Thailand. Tell me about that. My life in Thailand, it's, a, it's such a great memory from growing up in a small town I was born in Chiang Mai, which is in the northern of Thailand, and I get to learn and get to cook with my mom, my grandma, and my aunts. So is that the earliest you can remember cooking? Is that when you started developing your love of cooking? I actually really hate cooking at the beginning. No way! <laughs> and I didn't know because when you were young, you was like, 
well, you know, was something either love or hate, right? But you didn't really understand it. Yeah. And then you get to learn more other things, you know, how, learn how to make an omelette, learn how to grill, learn how to steam, learn how to make curries and all of that stuff. And then were you a chef in Thailand? Uh, no, I was actually, uh, I was a nurse in Thailand. I went to school to be a nurse yeah. and work at a hospital um, in a small town as well, like closer to where I was born named Pai. I worked there almost uh, 10 years. Okay, so then how did that switch come? How did you change and, and start following a passion in, in cooking and um, a career as a chef? Yeah, so it, it started when I was in Thailand already. I uh, decided to open a small restaurant in uh, a town named Pai, which uh, the restaurant it's a very small restaurant called the Curry Shack, so that I get to become a chef there, and then at the same time, I work full-time as a nurse. And now you're here in Toronto. So you immigrated to Canada, and now you want to open up a business. Tell me about that process. What well, was that like? Yeah, so uh, it actually, I have all my intention to go back to nursing career. And opportunity came because Jeff's father, he tried my food at home and he thought that it's a great opportunity. Maybe we can open a restaurant together. He has a building in uh, Regent Park, which is, is uh, in Toronto. So he said, hey, let's, uh, let's build a restaurant together. So that's why they just started off the restaurant, the first one that we opened in 2008. So let's talk a bit about your restaurants. Tell me about how each one differs from the other. Yes, uh, we uh, Suko Thai is a first restaurant that opened in uh, 2008 and uh, first opened with uh, Jeff's family. We serve our classic Thai dishes along with a couple of the northern Thai dish that I uh, started back then. And then Pai, it's more northern uh, cuisine like um, dishes that I add more in there. So we have lots of Thai, which is uh, specific to northern Thai dishes. And then at Kin is Royal Thai Cuisine Inspire. So Kin is more elevated and um, the food that we serve is um, inspired from Royal Thai Cuisine that once cooked and served in the Royal Thai family. So the food will be uh, di different when uh, you look at it. It's like a more presentation of the color, of the delicacy way of how we prepare them. So what is your inspiration when you're putting together these menus for the different restaurants? So first of all, I like to cook what I like to eat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's why I can relate to yeah, that. Because then I, I remember the flavors, aroma, how it brings back my memories. Then when I, I grow up and eating them, I just feel like what is interesting, what is uh, can showcase the cuisine yeah. from my homeland to be not just like a food, but educational and um, something to learn about culture and the cuisine of Thai. Why is that so important to you? Is to bring the authentic Thai cuisine here to Toronto. You know, when I, when I first tried the food here and it seemed different and I say, it's, just, that's, it's not the same that where we eat back home. So for that matter, I feel like it's very, very important for me to show the authentic way or tradition way of how we cook or we serve. So what's the most satisfying part of opening up your restaurants here in Canada? And then where do you see yourself going? I would say, you know, when you do something and people respond to it, I have so many of my guests come to the restaurant and say, oh, thank you so much for the meal. They feel like this is one of the best meal that they have. It just satisfy me as a cook. What next for me, it's probably gonna continue cooking and learn more about different culture, different cuisine. That sounds exciting. Thank you. Thank you so much. You are such a joy to speak with. I had so much fun and I'm extremely hungry. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you again. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. After the break, we head back to the kitchen to finish Chef Nui's red curry on Dish with Mary. We now return to Dish with Mary. Welcome back to Dish with Mary. We've got Chef Nui here and we're continuing to cook our recipe, our red curry. Let's check on the rice. Yes, it's already ready. Wow, look at that, Mary. All the water's evaporated. This is yes. so nice and fluffy. What else do we have on the stove here? The coconut milk. 
which okay. is the coated milk. We do two part of it. So one part is the um, thick part. So to make the red curry, uh, we need to heat up the thick part of coconut milk to bring it to um, nice, like a uh, give a beautiful oil and aromatic there. So meanwhile, this one gonna take about a couple minutes. So you're just continuing to stir with the ladle. The couple minutes of the thickening, thickening part of coconut milk okay. to cook. I want to show you something here. So this is the our red curry paste that we make together. This is what we've made together. Yes, it, we use a little bit though. We use about a quarter cup. I'm just gonna continue stirring as we're talking yes. about that. And also with the um, uh, our meat here today, I use the. Uh, pork because uh, that's what I grew up in using in Thailand. So I marinate the pork in a little bit of the tapioca starch, yeah. a little bit of salt, a little bit of uh, oil okay. and water. Amazing. I think we're ready here to be adding yes. the ingredients okay. in. What do you think? Let's uh, add the our co uh, curry paste in here. And you're just putting that right into the coconut milk. So this one here, it's a little bit um, uh, tied together because we pack them to about a quarter cup of the red curry. So I'm just gonna stir a little bit. So now you can load the heat just a little bit mm -hmm. because once the coconut milk, it's get to the boiling point. So it bubbling up very fast. Yeah. And at the same time, I will add the meat in already. Okay. Meat and also the squash because it might take longer time to cook. Okay. So these two will be uh, the first ingredient that we go in there. And also mm -hmm. we keep stirring them mm -hmm. a little bit. So now about, I would say, a couple minutes. So the outer of the meat itself have cook up so then it keep the moist when you put more of the, the, the coconut milk inside. Okay. So no more we'll turn the heat up just a little bit. What else are we adding in here? So after this, I'm gonna add um, the coconut milk. So to cook more of the curry. So now here we go. So now this is a little more liquefied. Yes, the, the coconut milk itself, it had two parts. One, it's a um, thick part where we bring out the oil okay. and the, uh, the cream. So the, the other part called thin part of coconut milk. Mm -hmm. So I thin the coconut milk using the, a little bit water in there. Okay, and now? And now we're just waiting for the, co uh, the red curry to boil, you know, to cook more okay. of the meat. So now we've got our meat ready to, well, it's all cooked up. What's yeah. next? And the next thing will be add the Thai eggplant. And those are cute. So I'm gonna just drop this one in. Uh, this is can be eat raw, it can be eat cooked. So for me, I don't like to cook it um, too much because you can have a texture. Mm -hmm. But um, some people would like to cook a very soft, so it just depends how you like it. Okay, beautiful, and it coats everything. Yes, and the next thing, Mary here, I like you to um, hold this one. So this okay. is um, we can break in half like this. So this one here, it's called makut lam leaf. So makut lam leaf, before you add in there, you just pull the rib off. So you just, two part of the makut lam here, you put it so together like this. So this is the like actual this. leaf of yes. the lime. And then you just pick the rib off and then pull all the way down and drop it directly uh, into. So we're folding it in half yes. and then just ripping the rib. Yes of the leaf off and we've got and two just heads. I love it. Directly in there. Right into How many of these yes. are we adding in? I add about five of them. And they're almost done here. The last minute of this, we'll add um, I our... immediately am getting that citrus, that, that lime. Yeah. So now the last part of this is I will add uh, Thai basil and immediately just uh, drop it into the sauce, please. And we'll cook until it's like a soft and then that's about right. I can see that's already fully cooked. So just gonna turn this off. Please do, yes. thank you. And then we add the fish sauce in there. So the fish sauce, the recipe call for about um, two tablespoons. we we'll add in there. Mm -hmm. so, so now- So what do you have in that bowl? This is the, the uh, coconut sugar. The coconut sugar, when we add it into the red curry because we add it last, I have a trick for you. So we have to, Melt this one with the hot sauce first. May I have this, Absolutely. please? Absolutely. Oh, so, so it's like a paste. Yes. It's um, the coconut sugar. It has more of the water contents in itself. So it's like a paste. So before you add it into the curry, just take some of that hot, hot coconut, coconut liquid. Coconut, yes. 
and then you just melt it a little bit this way the food it just get uh, flavor so this is will be um, a special technique that my mom teach me and um, I will very much happy to share the technique I know it might not uh, be a big thing but again you know like uh, some small little detail but it, it makes just a make difference it different because you get that sweetness throughout the entire dish yes not just a clump of it and here we go. Would you like to try some? I would love to. Yeah, okay. Let what me do we have, have we have our spoons one. here. Okay. I'm gonna go right in. Yeah, here we go. I just Thank you. Just be careful, it's quite hot. Hmm. Oh my goodness. Thank you. That's Thank all I can you. say, because this is fantastic. It's got a little bit of heat, which I love. And it's so flavorful. Can I have yeah. a little more? <laughs> <laughs> so I have you a big bowl of this with rice. So you just pour, put the rice in the plate, pour yes. this on top. Yeah, so uh, to eat them, we just uh, have a, a bowl. You just slowly scoop one bite onto your rice and then eat one bite at a time. This was so delicious. Thank you so much for joining us. Let's plate this and let's make our way over to the table. For today's red curry recipe, you can visit our website at ami.ca slash dish dash recipes. Chef Nui, thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to cook with us, to introduce us to this delicious meal. My pleasure. Thank you so much for having me here today. And thank you for watching. Join us again for another episode of Dish with Mary. Production services provided by Frank Digital. Hosted by me, Mary Mamaliti. Guest chef, Nui Regular. Producers, Chris McIver, Livy Lee. Director, Chris McIver. Director of Photography, Braden Music. Food stylist, Amanda Bebo. Produced in association with Accessible Media Inc. Integrated described video consultant, M. Williams. Supervising producer, Michelle Dudas. Copyright 2023. An AMI original production.